So we had some talk about the usability and the user point of view on light graph, so how we define the interface and how we interact. And now is more of a, of a deep feedback of how light graph got there. So uh, I'm James Herbanks, going to be talking about the Julia Graphs ecosystem. And this is uh, work with the whole light graphs and Julia Graphs team, uh, including myself and Seth Bromberger, who couldn't make it here today. So we'll start at the very beginning of graph theory, uh, finding paths over bridges in European cities. Um, if you're <laughs> looking to get to the Tower of London, this is a way. <laughs> um, so uh, what are we doing with Julia graphs? It's a whole ecosystem f around the graph theory applications in Julia. Um, our plan is to do everything from core data structures to advanced algorithms, uh, matchings, flows, all that stuff. Um, we're particularly interested in kind of network science, complex networks, network analysis, and then operations research and logistics. Um, those are kind of our two pillars of, of applications. Um, if there's a graph data set out there on the internet, it's probably in a format that gra uh, graphio.jl can read, um, and that has a lot of libraries in it, uh, a lot of dependencies on uh, kind of core I.O. primitives. Uh, if you're trying to make a visualization, you can use graphplot.jl, which uh, hooks into Compose to make SVGs. Um, and then, yeah, uh, we care about everything from counting paths to spectral graph theory, um, sequential all the way up to multi-core, in our brand new parallel module. Flexible APIs. Yeah, and a big part of what we're doing with the Julia graphs is balancing the fact that math and or math and computer science share the field of graph theory. Um, it's critical to, to both of them, and we really want to respect both perspectives, which leads to a lot of agonizing over what to name things. Uh, so we're pretty, <laughs> for this uh, three-hop ego net, of the package dependency graph, we are in the center. Um, so that's because it's a breadth for search starting from light graphs. <laughs> and uh, this is using uh, graphplot.jl. Um, so uh, cool things in here that I didn't even know until I made this diagram last week uh, is there's cool stuff in here like network learning and combinatorial bandits. I don't know what they do, but it's very exciting. Um, and then we can see some clusters of usage, um, kind of, so I should say, this is a graph of packages that depend on light graphs, um, either directly or indirectly. So some interesting things are probabilistic programming. So all this uh, BayesNet, Mamba, DiffieQ Bayes, cool stuff. Image processing, um, kind of image quilting and image segmentation type stuff. Uh, economics, so a lot of economic modeling um, people are using light graphs. Biology, and another surprise to me was symbolic math. And uh, if your Julia code isn't being used to do something radically unanticipated, you're not writing Julia right. <laughs> so uh, I didn't even know that there was like expression optimization with light graphs. Cool. So uh, yeah, so the thing that uh, enables a lot of our new innovation that happened this year was the decision to adopt an abstract graph interface. Uh, we started out with no abstraction in light graphs, and then um, have finally come around. We took the perspective that if we can't do it right, we're not gonna do it at all. And we finally figured out how to do it right. That involves some simple traits, and uh, so some new capabilities that we have are simple graph, the graph type you know and love from the last few years. If you're running low on memory, and you don't need to modify your graph, you might want to get some performance improvements by going to static graphs, um, which kind of compress things in order to uh, use less memory. Um, if you've got weights, like you're doing optimization or kind of OR type stuff, you probably have weights. You want to use weighted graphs. And if you're getting into the graph database, uh, graph databases are the new hotness. So we have metagraphs, which contain metadata on their edges. Oh, and then there's also evolving graphs for um, kind of temporal things. Uh, and evolving graphs is a good example of a package that was already written with no dependency on light graphs that we brought into the Julia graphs ecosystem. Here's metagraphs. 
So uh, maybe you have some data and some CSV files or a database, um, or you're, you love query.jl, um, and so you've constructed a data frame. Uh, then you can declare certain columns, like on here, start and finish, are gonna be two columns that represent the source and the destination of each edge, and every other column is metadata. So then you can quickly convert that into a metagraph and explore the properties of each edge. So that's what props of metagraph with one, two, gets the properties associated with the edge from vertex one to vertex two. And all of the algorithms in light graphs work on metagraphs um, kind of right out of the box. See our talk yesterday if you wanted to find new, uh, new types of graphs. Uh, we also brought in evolving graphs, um, and Matt made one pull request, uh, Matt Besançon, uh, made one pull request to evolving graphs and implemented the abstract graph interface, and now you can use evolving graphs as abstract graphs. So then uh, we also uh, brought out some parallel algorithms with Soham on the GSOC, and we don't yet have a grand unified theory of parallel graph algorithms. Um, it's pretty tricky. I think anyone who's done any parallel programming agrees that parallel programming is tricky. Um, so we have some, some things working now and are looking for the kind of long-term roadmap to get a, to nail the interface on that. Um, yeah, so we have all these ecosystem integrations like I talked about with uh, Julia Opt and the Dataverse, uh, data frames, data streams, stuff like that. And in order to enable that, we use, uh, kind of, we export our uh, core types from light graphs and then build a new package that depends on both light graphs and the base types of the other ecosystem. So then we're able to get kind of a, instead of packages squared integrations um, and just this massively densifying dependency graph, we're able to get ecosystem squared uh, growth in the number of bridge packages, um, significantly better. Uh, we had a lot of problems this last couple weeks um, as our pack was moved out of the standard library. Um, our team is kind of heterogeneous in our interests. Some people think that uh, spectral graph theory is really important, some people don't use it. Some people think uh, flows are really important. Some people don't use it. Um, and kind of it was revealed that light graphs and the Julia graphs ecosystem is really brought out of a heterogeneous team. Um, and that, that exposed that. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the Julia graphs interfaces are mature. Um, so a couple years ago, if you wanted to do some graph theory in Julia, you almost immediately needed to file a pull request on light graphs. Uh, now you can write fairly substantial papers with little to no patching of, of uh, Julia Graphs packages. Um, and so these, this is some work that, that depended on light graphs that was published uh, since last JuliaCon. And one of my master's students, uh, RV, is Rohit Barkey um, on here. And Julio did some image quilting. And uh, there's another talk, I think it just happened here on complex network uh, political data. So I'm looking forward to the, to the sh video recording of that. Um, yeah, so we're here to announce uh, that Lightgraphs 1.0 is released as of today. Um, <laughs> um, and so yeah, we are planning, if you have a script that does some graph IO uh, analyzes the network that you brought in and kind of reports the results out to another downstream process, that script should run unmodified until 2.0. Um, we have some caveats. Uh, <laughs> if a function in light graphs computes a solution to a graph problem, like a breadth first search, you're not guaranteed to get the same breadth first search. So you need to be, uh, that's always been part of our API, but I'm making it explicit right now. Uh, <laughs> And then uh, some, some kind of things that are in the works uh, are gonna stay in this light graphs experimental module um, where breaking changes will be allowed. Right now we have graph isomorphism, uh, but a lot of that like grand unified theory of parallel graph algorithms is gonna be developed in experimental and then stabilized at some point. Uh, and so it's shipped. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, here's the pull request that was merged uh, some number between three and four hours ago. 
<laughs> uh, today. So light graphs is officially tagged, and you can uh, go and no. <laughs> go ahead and update your light graphs on 1.0, and then you can check that the tests verify, and they do. Thank you very much. And I'm happy to take any questions. We're almost at 30,000 tests. Just write a few more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, the beauty of uh, kind of combinatorial explosion of combinations of, te of types. <laughs> um, we're auto generating some tests. Oh, sorry. I had some code for uh, computing graph modular factorizations, which was truly the trickiest code I have ever written in my life. I, it took me months. Um, and then I thought I was going to use it for package resolution, and then it turned out not to work well. Um, but I, I, I sent it to Seth at some point. Did he ever? Yeah, I looked at it. That? Yeah. Um, it was some of the trickiest code we've ever written. Yeah, yeah. Read. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah. And yeah, pull requests always open. Yeah, that's I, I was since if that hasn't happened, I was just wrote down in my like speculation about things to do now that 1.0 is out. Um, I might I might do that. That seems like a good con contribution. Yeah, um, and then there was something else I want to show you. Uh, so this is this is the Git log from uh, just the last couple commits. I like the um, there was a final final changes here. And then, new features. <laughs> uh, fix a warning, and then we found, so we had to work so hard to get abstraction right. Um, we found a bug yesterday <laughs> that was due to the fact that if you use, uh, we try to use the smallest integer type that'll fit, but then there's an overflow. There's an overflow bug in between the centrality. Um, that was found after final changes. <laughs> so that's it, uh, unless there are qu other questions. Do you have any thoughts on the graph visualization space? I realize that graph visualization is both NP hard and also a very difficult user space. Do you think you'll be able to do more with graph visualization, particularly with some of like the new weighted graphs uh, functionality? Yeah. Um, problem with focusing on graph visualization, it's, it's a thing that everyone needs to use, but is not particularly uh, a common primary interest. And so if, uh, I know there are people who do research on graph visualization. Um, and if somebody saw this talk and that's what their dissertation is on, uh, you know, <laughs> join the team. Um, but that basically that's what it would take is is someone to put more full time effort into it, um, because it's it's very tricky, uh, it's very labor intensive. Like all visualization is labor intensive, um, but but that's what it takes. Yeah. Thank you very much. Is it, is it?